tonight, Nashville, Tennessee, 8 p.m. The Fabs, the Vols, Dunn and Riggins, Lane, Kern, Nashville tonight. Be a part of history one time only in Nashville. Tonight, the Tennessee Vols versus the Fabs. Fabs, it's nothing personal, son. This is 1999, not 1979. You were something back then, but we're something right now. We're the hottest team in professional wrestling today. So ladies and gentlemen, when you come to the Nashville Fairgrounds tonight, get ready to see the new legends in Mid-South Wrestling, the Tennessee Vols. Now, with that being said, and without any further ado, I'm going to give you the member of the Tennessee Vols that can take a metal chair and make you wear it like a hat and love it. He's the chairman of the Tennessee Vols, Stephen Dunn. Well, Stan Lane and Steve Kern, it's like this right here. It's nothing personal, just like the man said, but you're standing in our way. We're after our belts again, the North American titles, and we're after those NWA world titles. And to get them, we got to go through you. Now, I don't know what you've been doing, but everybody knows the Vols have one way of fighting, and that's wide open. And tonight, Nashville, Tennessee, like this man said, it's nothing personal. But we don't change our styles. We don't change our ways for anybody. So tonight, everybody just saw on the tape, I done spanked one bleach blonde, so two more ain't gonna make no difference. We're coming after you, Fabs. Stan Lane, Steve Kurt, you two were, were two of the greatest, but you're looking at two of the best right now. And tonight in Nashville, we're gonna show you why. Because we're the greatest tag team in professional wrestling today. What do they call you, Reno? The Tennessee Vols. That's right, baby. Beat us if you can.
gentlemen, welcome to NWA Worldwide. I'm Lee Tidwell. Today we're going to take you back in time to when Bart Sawyer, Chris Michaels, Teddy Sweet, Chad Hawk, and Ernest T jumped the Colorado kid in a coal miner's glove match. They hogtied him, put him on a flatbed truck, and drove him off, and he has not been seen since until a piece of tape we're going to show you in just a little bit. Well, you know, Lee, you forgot to elude that you had a gracious co-host over here, Farron Fox, and I'm going to try to help you get through this show today. And, yes, we are looking at the situation that happened not too long ago and when the Colorado kid was in that coal miners on the glove match. And let me tell you something. You don't know this, but I, Chris Michaels is one of the most devious, most intelligent wrestlers that NWA Worldwide has today. And there you see right there, Bart Sawyer's on the side of the ring. Colorado knocks him down with the glove. Teddy Sweet's out there. He's in the pink and the black. And then the red-headed stepchild's on the other side. I'm telling you, this, I loved watching this piece of tape, and I love to see him. What? I saw that. Colorado kid with a chair shot to the head. Down on the mat now. Bart Sawyer over there on the side celebrating. And that's exactly what I would be doing and celebrating if I had the Colorado Cat. Look at him. He's bleeding profusely, and that's just the kind of action I like to see here on NWA Worldwide. Well, now we got Bart Sawyer, Chris Michaels, and Teddy Sweet hog tying the Colorado Kid with that big bull rope. Teddy Sweet kicking him repeatedly to the head. Looks like Colorado Kid is out. He's out and out. I'm telling you what. The Colorado kid, he's been a thorn in a lot of people's side for a long time. And the Bart Sawyer and the redheaded stepchild, Chris Michaels, they're just trying to do what's right and what's right for the wrestling business and get rid of the Colorado kid. They got him hog tied, hands and feet together. Colorado kid squirming a little bit, trying to get loose. Teddy Sweet, redheaded stepchild, and Chris Michaels pulling him off to the side. Next week, fans, next Friday night, Bart Sawyer will take on the Colorado Kid with a special guest referee because apparently NWA Worldwide, Bill Barons and <laughs> Burt Prentice don't want to see what happened to the Colorado Kid happen again. So they're bringing in a special guest referee to when the Colorado Kid and Bart Sawyer meet next Friday night, Lee. Well, Bart Sawyer and them have got Colorado Kid on the flatbed truck. He is bleeding profusely from the head, beating the fire out of him on the truck right now. <laughs> and there the truck's pulling off. <laughs> oh, you know that Ernest T, he's a great truck driver, and he just drove the Colorado Kid right out of the Nashville Fairgrounds. This is, I just, every time I see this tape, I get so excited. <laughs> now, Farron, don't get so excited because this piece of tape we're about to see right here, the Colorado Kid does make his return. And Chad Hawk's going to be the beneficiary of that return. Here comes the Colorado Kid into the ring. Hawk has no idea he's there. Colorado Kid picks him up and is going to just plant him on the mat. <laughs> and right there, the Colorado Kid gets the one, two, three on Chad Hawk. But this, this just didn't end. This is a travesty right here. Now, kid's pulling out the rope that he got tied up with. Turning Chad Hawk over. He's going to hog tie Chad Hawk just the way Bart Sawyer and them hog tied him and put him on that flatbed truck. See, what I don't understand is why Burt Prentice and Bill Barons weren't out there to stop the Colorado Kid from committing this travesty of justice. The poor red-headed stepchild was blindsided by the Colorado Kid. That just shows you what kind of character the Colorado Kid has. Now, Hawk is out. Hawk is just out. I don't even know if the kid is breathing. Colorado Kid is now tying him up just like they did to him. I think it's payback. <laughs> payback, payback, whatever. The Colorado Kid is going to face his day, and next Friday night, I guarantee Bart Sawyer will take care of the Colorado Kid, special referee or no special referee. Well, now, Bart Sawyer and Colorado Kid, when they square off, it is going to be a match that you want to see. Open that door this time. Now, look, Colorado Kid, he's just a copycat of what Chad Hawk and all of those fellas did to him the, a few short weeks before. But you know what I'm excited about tonight, Lee, is the big matches coming to the Nashville Fairgrounds tonight, tonight, tonight. The return of the Fabulous Ones, Stan Lane and Steve Kern. All right, the Fabulous Ones are going to take on the Tennessee Vols. It seems kind of like a grudge match. Well, the Vols want to be legends. They're going to have to beat two of the biggest legends ever in Nashville wrestling history, and that's the Vols. And look right there, the Colorado Kid stuffing Chad Hawk right into his blazer, and no telling where the Colorado Kid took Chad Hawk. Now tonight, the Fabs and the Vols are going to be going up against each other to see who's going to be the tag team of the next millennium. But coming up next, the confrontation between Barry Houston and Smart Bart. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the action. I'm Lee Tittle alongside me, the diva of the NWA. Savannah. Hi, Lee. Aren't you glad to be sitting next to me? I'm thrilled. Anyways, in the ring right now, we have Smart Bart Sawyer against Barry Houston of NWA Florida. Now, Barry Houston trains in the WWF Dojo, and right now we're going to show you some highlights from last night. 
I believe uh, Bart made a thousand dollar challenge to Barry Houston. Yeah, thousand dollars saying that Barry Houston cannot beat him again. Now we're going to show you how this match ended up and how the thousand dollar challenge match came to be. Now right now we have Barry Houston and Bart Sawyer back in the back. Bart Sawyer whipping him around, throwing him into that steel guardrail. Can't see very much from the crowd vantage point right now, but Barry Houston is down. Bart Sawyer having a look of just anger on his face, picking up the guardrail right now. Get him. Get him, Bart. Get him. I love Bart Sawyer. I just think he's the best wrestler in the NWA right now. Of course, next to my man, Farron Fox, who no woman in Nashville or anywhere else can beat. Now, Bart Sawyer leading Barry Houston through that standing room only crowd. The fans have demanded we have more ringside seats. They don't want to sit in the bleachers no more. They want to be close to the action right at ringside. Well, ringside was full and and I tell you what, I don't want to sit in the bleachers either. So they need to get their pennies and their nickels and their dimes and empty their change drawer and get to the box office by 6 o'clock so they can sit ringside to see the Fabs and the Vols and, of course, to see Farron and a lady from the audience. Now Houston with a pennant combination, only a two count there, helping Sawyer up. Sets him up, puts him in. Lifts him up. Big suplex. His hand's just bouncing off the canvas there. There's Ernest T at ringside along with Big Business Brown and his brother Sterling Nico. I like those guys. Two count only by Houston. Sawyer kicking out. Now Houston helping Sawyer up. Throws him into the ropes. Picks him up and just drills it. That's right. There's going to be a $1,000 challenge tonight, and you're going to get to see why here in just a few minutes. Houston now walking over to Bart. Pulling him back a little bit. Looks like he's going to set him up. Houston hushing down the crowd. Off the ropes. Oh, my gosh. What is that? Listen, all these trailer park trash women out here at the fairgrounds might think that's sexy, but I sure don't. Ugh. Houston just down in the oh, right between the legs of Bart Sawyer. That is making me hurt sitting right here. Sawyer now wincing in pain. Houston... Over at the ropes, comes over. Big right hand just levels Bart Sawyer. Picks him back up, throws him against the ropes again. A big clothesline, Sawyer's down again. He picks him up, big scoop slam there. Houston walking over, asking the crowd for permission to go to the top rope. Why is he asking the crowd for anything? Those hicks don't know what they want. Houston up on the top rope. Stands up. A big somersault. Sawyer out of the way. Houston lands flat on the mat. Sawyer now picks him up. Big DDT. Yep, he missed that moonsault there, and Bart just got him with the DDT. Experience, that's what counts, experience. Now Sawyer, there's a chair in the ring. Sawyer throws him against the corner there. Sawyer picks up the chair. Going after Houston. Houston kicks the chair, and it's in the Bart's head. Bart's down. Bart Sawyer is out. Houston now goes for the pin. And a three count. Bart Sawyer, I just got out of the ring wrestling one of the hardest matches I've ever fought in my life. You are, and I'll give it to you, one of the toughest opponents I have ever had to date. Whether it's a WWF, WCW, I don't care where it is, NWA, you are one tough dude, and I give you that. But Bart, as I looked across the rating sheets for the rest of the NWA, I see that they seem to be coming up... Uh, a little bit shy? Well, there's a better word for it, but I'll get to that in a second. But you see, I realize that has a lot in common to do with you, because whether it's you, your mouth, your wrestling ability, or even your manhood, it always seems to come up just a little bit short, if you know what I mean. Now, Tennessee is supposed to be the volunteer state, so I want to tell all the good people of Tennessee that came out here and supported me tonight in one of my toughest matches that I personally will give my service to rid Bart Sawyer from the great state of Tennessee, from the NWA, to finally get him off the air and get somebody out there who can really do the job. And once and for all, rid him from the sport I love, professional wrestling. Bart, you told me you put up $1,000 tomorrow night and make no bones about it, that's a lot of money. Bart, I beat you once tonight. Don't think it'll be that hard for me to beat you again. And Bart, remember one thing. All I need is one opportunity, just one, and your shoulders will be the mat. One, two, three. Barry you 
Houston. Is it today, tonight, tomorrow, the next day? Well, let me let you in on a clue. It is tonight, the Nashville's Fairgrounds Sports Arena. I wrestled you, yeah, you can talk about how tough I am. You can come out here, you can whine, you can cry, you can beg to the fans of Tennessee, but they're all pukes. You had to resort to hitting me in the head with a steel chair, Barry Houston. You talk about a wrestling match. You talk about what you did. What a tough fight. You are lucky, Barry Houston. You walked out of there with your cojones. And if you've got any cojones, and for you people in Tennessee, we're talking about them things right down there. Because I got a thousand bucks, Barry Houston, that says you can't do that to me. Smart Bart Sawyer, two nights in a row. Tonight, Nashville Fairgrounds Sports Arena. You think that you're going to pin my shoulders to the mat? One, two, three. You bring a chair. You bring a truck. I don't care because I'm going to beat you. And you can talk about the ratings. You can talk about coming short. But you know what I was always told? When they talk about somebody coming up short, they got to have a yardstick. And the only way you can have a yardstick like that is to look at your own south. Speaking of coming up short, Colorado kid, the NWA, they're doing all you, they can to make sure that you get this belt back. They're bringing out a troubleshooting referee. Well, the only trouble you got, Colorado kid, is you're not a formidable contender. What have you done for me lately? You ain't done a damn thing. Last time I saw you, Colorado kid, you were hogtied on the back of a flatbed truck being driven out of here. I don't care what you did with the stepchild. I still got the belt. So you take that stepchild, you do what you like to him. You know, because I know this is from Tennessee and this is where they shot deliverance and all that kind of good stuff. So you have a ball with the stepchild. Next time you see me, Colorado kid, I'm going to have the North American heavyweight title and come to think about it, I don't think you're a worthy contender. So they can put me in the ring all they want, but it ain't a title shot. So Colorado kid, you bring it on. NWA, you bring your troubleshooting referee, and I've already shown what smart Bart Sawyer can do when his shoulders are pushed against the wall. And Barry Houston, if you think tonight you're going to put my shoulders anywhere, you're out of your freaking mind. Nashville, Tennessee, Fairground Sports Arena, smart Bart Sawyer is going to rule the day. Oh, yeah, because life is good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to NWA Worldwide. I'm Lee Tibble. Alongside me now in the studio, Sterling Nico Brown. No, that's right. Sterling Nico, the embodiment of perfection in the NWA. How's it going, Tad Lee? Well, uh, that's Tidwell, and it's pretty good right now. Right now, we've got a match between Barnyard Briggs and Stylin Shane Eaton. Yeah, right now we got Barnyard Twigs up on the top rope there, and he's about to make a little fall. Oh, look at that. That was too bad. Now Eaton rolled out of the way. Briggs is down. Eaton is down. The referee is starting to count. Eaton that up, and I don't think he knows exactly where he is right now. Now, if you want to take a notice there, I'm also down there at ringside along with me and my brother, Big Business. He's quite a studly one, i got to say. And also we have Corey Williams on Barnyard Briggs' side of the ring to make sure that the Brown brothers do not interfere. You know, that Barnyard Twigs, we got a little issue with him. You know, it seems that in Fairview, Tennessee, he decided to put his hands on my brother. All that's addressed on our little homepage, though, on that, for those of you that know what a computer is, uh, that's www.mcwrestling.com. Surf onto there, and you'll, like the, you'll get to see my opinions of the whole situation. Now, Eaton with a big bulldog on Briggs, had him down for the two count. He is now up. Eaton stomping away on Briggs. Now, remember that website address is mcwrestling.com. Surf on over there and check it out. Eaton now with big right hands in the top ahead of Briggs. Briggs with a low blow. An illegal maneuver, I might add. Uh, the ref didn't say nothing. Briggs now rolling Eaton over. Well, I think the ref was drunk. That's why I didn't say anything. Oh, stop it. Well, it could be true. All right, we've got Briggs now. He's backing Eaton into the ropes. Around to the other side. Oh, and a big power uh, slam by Briggs. Just bounced him off the map. Yeah, that was one of the best moves I've seen. Well, where is Briggs from? He's one of those country boys, isn't he? Uh, barnyard. 
uh, oh, yeah. it's from a farm or something to that effect. That explains haircut. Now Briggs has got him pinned. He's got him pinned. I know. Six seconds. And the Brown brothers, you and your brothers over there, no, distracting the no, referee. No, no, I have no idea what you were talking about. I think we had something in his eyelash, and we just wanted to notice that for him so he could get that out of there. A big spinning heel kick by Eaton drops Briggs down. The match would be over if you and your brother was not distracting the referee. Well, you know, it's not my job to count. It's the refs, and the ref really needed to pay attention to the match, and not at us. Eaton now choking Briggs. Corey Williams, he's not helping his friend out too much here, distracting the referee while Eaton is choking Briggs. That is totally legal, I'll have you know. That's a Greco-Roman choke. Greco-Roman. Okay, big clothesline there by Eaton. Drops Briggs down again. Eaton now taking a little bit too much time getting Briggs up. Giving Briggs a little time to rest. Backs him into the ropes again. A big reversal here. And a clothesline just knocks Eaton off his feet, and he is down. Oh, uh, well, I'll have to tell you one thing, that Barnyard Twigs. You know, he, for a big man, I got, I got to say, he is kind of a strong guy. And there's my brother walking around that stelly. Oh, looks like Barnyard tripped over my hand there. <laughs> now, folks, don't forget, tonight at the fairgrounds, you need to be there early. Box office opens at 6 o'clock to get the ringside seats. We had to put extra seats in because the fans were demanding more ringside seats. Unless you want to be stuck in the bleachers, the nosebleed section, you need to be there early and just bring as many people as you want. You're going to have a great time. Now we got Eaton. Uh, reversal here by Briggs. Another reversal by Eaton. And Corey Williams, thinking Eaton is going to come up against the ropes, trips up Briggs. <laughs> Eaton, big leg drop, and gets the three count on Briggs. Oh, well, if Barnyard wasn't so clumsy, he would, may have won this match. Now there's you and your brother there. Your brother, I don't know if he got hot or what, with his shirt undone, raising we're, the hand of Stylish and Shane Eaton. We're beautiful, I got to say. Look at the three of us. Looks like the number 010. I don't know. It, to me, it just looks like something Ernest goes to wrestling school. What? Now back in the ring, Corey Williams has jumped Barnyard Briggs from behind. Now you remember, Williams was trying to trip up Eaton and accidentally tripped Briggs. Now the two talked in the ring, and it looked like that Briggs accepted Corey Williams' apology and explanation. As Briggs turned to get exit the ring, Williams jumped in from behind. Oh yeah, Barnyard, he's so gullible. I guess it's just one of those country boy things. Now tonight at the fairgrounds, there is going to be a grudge match between these two. Now two weeks ago, they wrestled to a time limit draw. Now this could add fuel to the fire and there could be a clear decisive winner at the fairgrounds tonight. I know I'll be there. Oh boy, the NWA has made my day once again. Mr. Barnyard Briggs, you were just a demonstration, not an imitation. I busted you up in that ring fair and square. Don't give a crap what the fans say, they're just Little people. Do you understand? All y'all are just little people. You gotta understand, I am now considered a superstar. I'm the prettiest thing on national television. And you wanna sit there and embarrass me and humiliate me with your little Bad Street Boys video. Well, let me tell you something, Bad Street Boys. My name is Stylin' Shaney. My name <laughs> says it all. You come in there and you face me, you can expect a one, two, three, because I am fair and square. There is no other than Stalin. One more trip we're going to take down memory lane. I will never be on your side. I will never communicate with you again. You are trying to come out and be a Stalin imitator. I'll demonstrate what is the baddest man in the world today, and that is me. I'm coming for each and every one of you little bad boys.
I'm Angelica, and uh, Bad Street Boys. I, I I don't I don't know what's going on with that at all because you know some of the fans here seem to like them and stuff. The the little girls or you know some. Of, I, I don't know who who likes them, but I know a, a real woman would not like the Bad Street Boys because. That's what they are. They're boys. They they know how to play around and have fun, or I don't know what they do. But Shannon knows. Shannon knows what I can do to them. And I've brought the men here with me tonight to take care of them. And uh, I might have to step in there and take care of some things myself because uh, they're going to go down because that they're they're an excuse for wrestlers is what they are. And I have the men with me, and we're going to show them how it's done exactly. Well, now Lee, I know you're excited to see Farron Fox in the broadcast seat right back where I belong, right next to you on this telecast. And right now, ho oh, I had one of the biggest heifers I ever seen enter the Nashville Fairgrounds. I call her Scary Mary. Everybody else was just calling her Mary. And I gave her a wrestling lesson this past Friday night at the fairgrounds. Now, folks, don't forget, tonight, the Fabs, the Vols, the tag team match of the millennium, Stan Lane and Steve Kern of the Fabs against Stephen Dunn and Reno Riggins of the Vols. It's going to be a slobber knocker. Also, if you want a ringside seat, you need to be when the gates open at 6 o'clock. We had to put more seats at ringside. Fans are demanding ringside seats. They don't want to sit in the bleachers, in the nosebleed section, and they all want ringside seats. If you want a ringside seat, be there at 6 o'clock when the gates open. They're going to have to get there early just to get a seat. This is going to be a sellout tonight. I'm telling the people of Nashville, Tennessee, this is going to be one of the most awesome nights of professional wrestling. And you know what? I'm sick and tired of talking about it. Let's talk about me, Farron Fox. I gave this woman a beating of her life, and any lady, there's not... <laughs> There's not a heifer in this Nashville area that can take Farron Fox because <laughs> I'm telling you, th tonight I'm going, uh, I'm just upset about this. All right, folks, don't forget also tonight, Bart Sawyer, Barry Houston, the $1,000 grudge matches up. Bart Sawyer has offered $1,000 to Barry Houston if he can pin him again like he did last night at the fairgrounds. Also, ladies, all four Bad Street Boys will be at the fairgrounds tonight. He's also got Corey Williams and Barnyard Briggs in that match from the confrontation they had last night. Corey Williams trying to help out Barnyard Briggs, accidentally tripped him up. Williams jumped in from behind in the ring after accepting Briggs' apology. You know, back to the match, back to the matter at hand. This scary Mary, she just was awful. You know, if I was going after $500, I put $500 of my own money up if she could beat me in five minutes. And if I was going after $500, I would be a lot more aggressive. Well, that's true, but now, Farron, don't forget, tonight at the fairgrounds, you're also putting that $500 up to any lady challenger. Now, I've seen some tough women out in the audience. I'm not so sure how long you can keep this winning streak up. Well, I just, you know what? I beat Bonnie Baldwin last week. I beat Scary Mary last night. And I just don't think there's any true competition in Nashville, Tennessee, as far as these ladies go, or if you want to call them ladies. I mean, every week you hear about the new fitness craze. You hear about the kickboxing, the tie bow. Well, Lee, I tell you what, you get any tie bows, Nashville hoes, I don't care what it takes, but I need some competition. Look, I've got her in a, I just wrenched her in on that headlock, and there ain't no way she's going to get away from me. All right, folks, now next Friday night, Bart Sawyer, the Colorado kid with a special referee. This is for the title. We're going to have a six-man tag match with the Bad Street Boys and Farron Fox will take on another lady challenger. Also, Stephen Dunn and Ashley Hudson. Now, in the ring, Farron has got Mary in a headlock. The referee is asking her if she needs to give up. Uh, her friend here trying to pull her to the ropes. The referee backs him off. There's no getting away from that. I'm telling you what, what you're seeing on this mat is what you're going to see every time I step in the ring because all you ladies better get ready and try to come after my money because I guarantee it's over with. <laughs> There's the bell, folks. Can you believe this, Savannah? Every week I've been coming out here and defending my intergender world championship. And can you believe the competition that they're sending me? These fat, no bathing heifers with no teeth. Oh my gosh, do you not people not know what soap is? Do I need to bring soap and give it out? Please. <laughs> oh, but you know what? <laughs> this week, tonight, I'm gonna be at the Nashville Fairgrounds and I guarantee there's not a heifer, there's not a woman in sight of Nashville, Tennessee that can come down and take care of me. And you know what? I've been putting this $500 up every week and there ain't a heifer that's been able to get it from me yet. So I tell you what, I'm gonna bring my $500 tonight. So ladies, you just come on out to the Nashville Fairgrounds and you just come on and sign the liability release form because I'd hate to leave you laying and then have to pay some doctor bills. But I guarantee tonight, in Nashville, Tennessee, whole Savannah, we're going to take care of business. 